you know, where, where I, thought, I thought India did very, very well. I mean, there was a concern going into South Africa with our fielding, but we beat South Africa in the field. Hmm. Whether it's in the one days with Pandya and Rahane and Virat and Rohit and South Africa got outfielded by India, which has perhaps never happened in the past. And we've said that, you know, we've uh, challenged ourselves, you know, we made it very clear we want to be the best fielding side on the park. And even when you pick combinations, when you pick players, you pay attention to that. You know, gone are the days with one department you can play the game. You got to be a contributor on the field. And there, would you say that the drop catches cost us the second? Ridhiman's injury cost us quite a bit? Oh yeah, I mean, he's the best keeper in the world. So you would miss the best keeper in the world. Though having said that, Parthiv came in did and, well. and did an excellent job. In the third test, he yeah, was very good. And never easy, you know. But when you're talking of Saha, he's the best in the business. If I actually see our performance over the last one year, one, two, three, gone. Ninety percent of the games these three are winning, whether it's a Rohit 100 or a Virat 100 or a Shikhar 100. But on days it's three for 40, that middle order still sort of gives me jitters. But now with Ajinkya, you have a solid number four. Do you think that given the way Suresh has performed, you now have a pool? I mean, is that something you are looking at? Because if I remember right, you said we will experiment for a period. But then we will zero in on our World Cup plans. Hmm. So you need, you need depth, like I said. So the signs are good. So even in the last T20 game or the second one, we lost those top three yes. that you mentioned. Yeah. You know, but you still got 180. With Manish and MS and, and You know, you still got close to 190. Now those are positive signs. You know, but you want more consistency. You know, you want that security at four, five and six. You know, and which will come with giving opportunities to different players and then seeing what is the right combination before you go into the World Cup. And there's still time for that. You know, we still have, you know, one-day series in England. You know, I think after the England series, you will be in a position to zero in on about 18, 20 players. Bluntly put, were you happy with Suresh's performance? He's a big player, played World Cups. Yeah, he's, he's vastly experienced. That's well, the point. Vastly experienced and, and, you know, he showed what experience can do. With you know, but what I liked best was he was fearless. What I liked was the intent. Because normally when you come back into a side after a long period of time, you know, you can be playing for your place. Yeah. And that, yeah. put, can, that can put added pressure on you. But he went out there as if he was never out of the side. And batted in that fashion, which was very good to see. And what you said, the word, you, you used the word intent. What we loved seeing on TV was the intent showed by MS. Hmm. Whether it's that chat with Manish Pandey, which became viral on social media, hmm. where he says the match is here, focus, etc. Or that 50, or from behind the wickets, his talk. Talk about MS. I mean, he'll go down as one of the greatest one-day players, you know, the world has ever seen. And when you have that kind of uh, experience, you know, the level of fitness, the way, you know, what he's maintained. And like I said, you know, there's no substitute for experience. So it cannot be bought or sold in the market. And when, when it comes to finishing a game or batting in the final overs, you know, there, there, there have been very few better than him in the history of the game. And he still could do it again. So that's a big yeah. sign for Yeah, him. which is very, very good. You know, when you have that cushion of someone like him coming at six or maybe even five, six or even seven, that makes a big, big, big difference. What really shone through was the bowling. I mean, yes, in batting, as you said, more consistency. But to see our bowlers pick 60 wickets in South Africa, bowling South Africa out in the one days, 190 all out, 200 all out, 118 all out, incredible. So word on Bhuvaneshwar Kumar, with both bat and ball, when the moment was tough, the tough got going. Yes, and you know, it's application, pure application. And we had to rotate the bowlers around. They all understood why they weren't playing, you know, a particular test match. Now like for amazing. example, you know, Bhuvi bowled magnificently in Cape Town, but on a hard track where we knew the ball won't swing or seam, we had to bring the taller fast bowler in. You so know. that was a conscious call. Oh yeah. Because there was a lot of criticism. Why? Yeah, why? Yeah, hell with the criticism. We were very, very clear in our mind, a tall fast bowler had to come in and rest him, you know, for that eight day period where he trained. So when he came back for the last test match, he was fresh. the speed was up again, you know, and it, it made a lot of difference. So, it, they will be chopping and they will be changing and it's, we play horses for courses and Bumrah. we need a pool of fast bowlers, you know, who will take us through the next 
18 months or so. Bumrah, five outstanding. Five oh, he was tour. outstanding. I mean, even when we rested him in between against Sri Lanka, you know, people said, you know, why are you resting? You know, all three of them went into the academy and trained their backsides off. Pandya, Bhuvi, and Bumrah. They were there for Anshami. They were there for about, I think, a couple of weeks. And we sent them there precisely for this reason, so that they last this trip. My hats off, you know, they, they all went, they went through all three formats and were very, very good. And, and, and now, before I come to the spinners and Shami, so with Bumrah, with Bhuvi, with Ishant, with Shami, with Umesh, didn't get a game, but yeah. it's there. You have a crop which makes us all dream that you can do it in England and South Africa for the first time, perhaps. No, when you have a bowling attack like this, and if they, and they would have again learnt from the South African team, because you know the lines they bowled, the lengths they bowled after the first innings of the series was a lot different, you know, from the next five innings what you saw from what they bowled in that first innings. Do you think South Africa lost it in the mind after the third test? Naturally, no question. You know, as I said it was a serious knockout punch. Last thing they expected was in their den, on a track that had grass, an opposition comes, 2-0 down, wins the toss, bats first, and then knocks them out. So mentally we also won against South Africa. Absolutely. Pressure-wise we won against South Africa. Not many teams will come to India and do that to India. So you know, when, when, you, when you go overseas and you knock out an opposition in that fashion, you know, you take that intensity into whichever series you're playing after that, whether it's one day or whether it's T20. I don't think South Africa recovered after that for a week before they realized there were three zip down in the one day series. Yeah, match was it was over. too late to recover. Final few questions, last few minutes of my show. You know, there was a lot of talk that, okay, on Indian pitches, Chahal and Kuldeep Yadav doing great, but overseas, overseas, these two have come out really well. One has to give a lot of credit. See, when you're a wrist spinner, you know, you, you believe you can turn the ball on any surface. But you know, what I liked about them was they were brave. Because with wrist spin, you will go for a few runs. But then you have that knack of taking wickets. You know, and, and, and you saw both of them. They went through a period of six overs, seven overs without taking a wicket. Then suddenly, in two or three overs, between them, they would take five, six wickets. And the match would turn on its head. Now, that's the big plus when you have wrist spin, you know, and I'm sure, again, they're young. You know, with this kind of exposure, one would hope they get better. So, they will, I mean, now that they've done so well in white ball, yes, even when under the pump with Klaassen, they were, they were being attacked, they held their own. Mostly they held their own, except in that wet ball, one T20 and one day or whatever. So, this gives you the option. So, I'm asking you this question again after December. Will Ashwin and Jadeja still continue to be in your scheme of things for the World Cup? Or is that debate largely getting settled? Everyone's in the mix. Because at the end of the day, there's a lot of cricket to be played. You know, there could be injuries. So you need a large pool. You can't say today, these are the three fast bowlers who are going to play in the World Cup. Still more than 12 months to go. Fitness will be the key. Form at that stage will be important. So, you know, you take one series at a step, one step at a time. You know, let, let's not jump the gun and think too far ahead. Ravi, when you, you talk straight, that's why this question. I mean, when, and you said we exceeded expectations, the country thinks so. I mean, we as a, as a cricket watching country love the way we played white ball cricket. When you go to your room and you're alone, and when you look yourself in the mirror, do you think 10 days ahead, going 10 days earlier in South Africa and this whole 80% nonsense, this test match series could have also been won. No doubt about that because you had your chances. You had your chances in both the test matches. So, you know, by you, you saying 10 days earlier, it would have given the boys more time to prepare. But unfortunately, it could happen. So, let's not live. But will you do that in with the England and Australia? Will you tell the board now? That, look, look, See, there are, are certain FTPs that are already put in place till 2019. But I know for sure, post-2019, all this what you're saying will definitely happen. It will also be the endeavour for England and Australia. A little more time is given. Like in England, I mean, I've spoken to the board. Anyway, we are playing one-day cricket first. Correct. So, allows us a little bit more time. Yeah. Australia also, 
the BCCI CEO told me yeah. that they have convinced Cricket Australia we want to play white ball first. Yeah. So that will allow your test match boys to go and get ready and acclimatize. Will yeah. that? So that's something that now you as head coach, because I mean, the fact that you know that we could have beaten them, yet because of those 10 days. And, and that will be the way forward, you know, in future, on every tour. You know, why should it be just England and Australia? You know, next time we tour, whether it's the West Indies or whether it's Sri Lanka, whether it's South Africa, priority should be given to preparation time. There's no question about that. Final question. My picture postcard moment for the last two months. Yes, Virat Kohli wasn't playing. You and Virat Kohli, that high five in that dressing room after we won the last T20. That camaraderie in the dressing room. One year now, Ravi, you have been in the job. Not one year, six months in mm -hmm. the job. Mm -hmm. Yes, there was a lot of lead up. As head coach, you feel vindicated, satisfied, saying, oh, I have proved myself or it doesn't matter. No, no. See, that, that's a job. It's a job for the players. But they have to be mighty satisfied with what they did in uh, South Africa. I mean, that kind of character, you know, makes someone like me sitting on the outside a proud man. Each one of our coaching staff, they would have been proud. Just seeing that intensity, you know, just that belief that they can still pull, in, pull it off, refusing to give up. See, feeling defeated is one thing. Give up, giving up is not tolerated. And they did not give up. And there was no I. There was a, like you said. There's no I in this team, it's we. So, even off the field, the intensity is the same. So if you met me off the field, my intensity would have been the same. That same belief was there that they can pull it off. So and it makes a huge difference. So now come July, that rather 1st of August, from memory 1 to 5, first test 9 to 13 lords, do you think India goes in with a team with self-belief? I am not going that far, Boria. Give me time to enjoy this tour. I need a couple of weeks more for the penny to drop. And, and if I need a couple of weeks for the penny to drop, the boys will need a month. So we'll talk of after a month. Fair enough. So that gives me another interview. Fair enough. That's fine. But what we have witnessed, what we have witnessed is actually history being made. 5-1 in South Africa against South Africa in the white ball format has never happened with any team. So to do that for this Indian team, Yes, the penny needs to drop because they need to enjoy, soak in the moment. And at the same time, 80% says the captain, the coach agrees, can we do it in the red ball also? See, optimism, hope and desire lingers on. Ravi said one, one and one. Off the record he said that. One in test match cricket, one in T20, one in one day cricket. Can India achieve it at the same time? Perhaps this team can. Many congratulations, Ravishas. Thank you. Thanks.